I have to ask, feathers. What's what? What's your what's your opinion on the feathers? Really itchy. Itchy? Yeah, I don't think the dinosaurs. You know, they get a little hot, so. So you so you you think having them perform without feathers was more of a of a labor thing? I think so. I think they. I mean, really, it's just a cost thing. You know, when you're making CGI dinosaurs, it's a lot cheaper to make them without feathers. Okay. So, and it's just practical. Okay, cool, cool. Um, on that note, what is your favorite dinosaur? So many dinosaurs. Uh, I think my favorite dinosaur is called a uh, Seismosaurus. Seismosaurus. Yes. What is it? Can I, can I might I, be pronouncing that wrong, which is embarrassing. What, what is that? A theropod? Is that a sauropod? Is that? Sauropod. It's basically like your brontosaurus, but it has a club on the end of its tail. For ass kicking. Yes. It's an ass kicking ass. Yes. So if if the the new Jurassic Park, if the Indominus Rex had gone up against that, it totally would have lost in the first act. So why didn't we get that in Jurassic World? Because it's kind of like a under the radar dinosaur, underrated. Not as cool as, you know, not as popular as little, some other dinosaurs. Little, little too niche? Yeah. Hipster dinosaur. So you're, you're our generation's foremost authority on, I would say, Jurassic Park nerd culture. Where did this fascination That's a high honor. Begin? That's a high honor. Thank you. Uh, no, you definitely are. But um, where... Spent a lot of time watching Jurassic Park. And, and opening tops trading cards. It's true. Um, where did the fascination begin? Where did we where did we start this epic Jurassic journey with Stephen Ray Morris? Uh, I mean, I saw the movie in theaters when I was six, and then I already liked dinosaurs at that point. So I feel like just it all coming together at the same time, and I think that fascination just never died. I, um, I was talking to the intern earlier, and I was saying. Jura and you mentioned it in the book as well, Jurassic Park was sort of a big deal for us because it was the first time we really got to see dinosaurs. Yeah, definitely. As far as what they looked like at that point. Yeah, it wasn't even like Jurassic Park is a really good movie, which, which it is. But on top Fantastic of Fantastic movie. Which on top of, but on top of that, that was the first time a lot of people even saw what, quote unquote, saw the best representation, representation of dinosaurs at the time. So it wasn't even just seeing a good movie, it was like, Oh wow! This is our first time we actually saw dinosaurs, as, as much as we knew at the time. So, what what, what is your opinion on c going from that to Jurassic Park three, where they're sort of just like B movie monsters? Yeah. Um, I mean, at that point, it was just like. Because I mean, you have some rough words for the yes, dinosaurs. I, I, I mean, I think to it, quote, it's the Jersey Shore of. That, yeah, I did say that. I mean, I think, I mean, at that point, it was just kind of, I think once you make dinosaurs, then you're like, what do I do with them? And I think it's just, that's been kind of the uninspired route that it took was just to make, because Jurassic Park is a monster movie. It comes from that tradition. Right. Um, so I think they've just kind of gone the uninspired route in, in those last two sequels. And, and, you, and, you, and you kind of ride that pretty hard again. And the book available yeah. on iTunes, on Amazon. Get it? Um, <laughs> okay, which is your favorite Jurassic Park movie, and why is it part three? <laughs> oh, uh, I didn't realize that I said it was part three, but I think <laughs> I think it's my favorite Jurassic Park because uh, Alexander Payne had a draft of the script, and he wrote Sideways and... Uh, the Descendants and about Schmidt and so I really just think of Jurassic Park 3 as this great black comedy <laughs> and I think it would have even been better if Paul Giamatti had played Grant I Paul think, Giamatti I just Grant. think that would have been amazing I mean so it's just great. a self-hating just just the dinosaurs you know just like <laughs> like I think I think that would have been the best version of Jurassic Park but sadly I mean well it's not too late for Paul Giamatti to be in a Jurassic Park movie he could be in Jurassic Universe yeah Jurassic World. He just can't mold too. it. He just can't mold it because again, Stephen Ray Morris already molded it in it molding a Jurassic Universe available on iTunes and Amazon. Um, Thank you. If you had a chance to go to Jurassic Park, would you? Yeah, I would. It's probably unethical, but I mean, 
dinosaurs. What if there was already a movie at that time called, you know, like, Black Reptile? But, um, that would certainly make it a lot harder to feel, because I, I would never go to SeaWorld again, or I haven't. Because it's awful. Yeah, because it's terrible, but dinosaurs brought back... How far do you weigh that think, against your moral obligation to... I mean, I think I probably wouldn't have a choice. It'd probably be too expensive to go, but... I mean, you could crowdsource it. I mean, maybe what I do is I just, for how much money I spend at Jurassic Park, I donate that amount to charity, and then I can sort of... That's okay. the sort of loophole. You think if it did exist, you think Bryce Dallas Howard would do a good job of uh, managing all of it? I think she would do a great job. I think she got a lot of shit on her day, because she was running that park for, you know, almost 10 years. 10 and, years. 10 until, years until without any incidents. Yeah, until the shit hit the fan. No spoilers. Pe people who haven't seen the movie yet, what... They'll probably would, see it by what, this point. I would hope. Just... I would hope, but if they haven't, what what would be your warning or your... What would be your primer for them going in? Primer for going to Jurassic Park or primer World. to see Jurassic World? World. Um, Bryce Dallas Howard's character is the main character. I agree. And Chris Pratt's just the like hunky beefcake. He doesn't really have a He's purpose other than just be hunky. other than just to be very handsome. So very handsome. That's that's my warning. Warning. Watch I'm out for warning. being handsome. Watch out. It's too much handsome. A lot too of gasoline handsome. dousing. Um, in Indominus Rex. I Rex. What's what? what I Rex. Indominus I Rex. Because you know Apple made it. So. Um, <laughs> What 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 what's your opinion on on that as a scientific endeavor? I thought it looked cool. It had quills. Um, I mean, I feel like they would start with something a little bit tamer first, but um, I thought it worked really well in the movie. Okay. Um, morally, where would you stand on that? Um, How would it fit into the Jurassic, you know, universe again? That he molded in his book, Molding a Jurassic Universe by Stephen Ray Morris, available on Amazon and iTunes. How, w how do you feel that would fit in the real world? I mean, to be honest, I feel like a lot of people don't even know that much about regular dinosaurs anyway. So in some weird way, I'd almost think that if that really existed, they would just pass it off as a real dinosaur. You think they could pull that off as like a real dinosaur? Like and then so giant... somebody on Reddit would be like oh shoot like this thing like total expose it's like this isn't a real dinosaur like this, i think they would just pass it off as a real dinosaur they would pay some paleontologist to write up a report oh we found these bones out in you know some desert it's a t-rex with arms yeah and they'd be like oh it's a new species and then yeah somebody on reddit would be like this is not a real dinosaur and then there'd be like a gawker piece and then it'd be all over Okay, so so in, InGen comes up to you, Stephen Ray Moore, as a foremost authority on dinosaur nerd culture, offer you a lump sum of money. They tell you, hey, we need some good press, give you and your family a lifetime pass to Jurassic World. Do you take it? Shit, yeah. Yes. I don't know if I can swear. Total, you can f swear all as much as you fucking want. Okay, cool. So, uh, f fuck yeah. Shit, yeah. Shit, yeah. Specifically shit, yeah. Specifically sh dinosaur shit, yeah. Yeah, that is one big pile of... Shit, yeah. But is there a phone in it? Mm, maybe. Maybe? Maybe. It has to be like an old school phone. Can't be like a satellite new one. phone. Yeah. Big old brick. Actually, an 80s phone. 80s that would phone. be even better. With a cord and it's attached to a car. Oh, yeah. That's like, yeah, big battery pack. <laughs> With big battery pack phones from like Saved by the Bell.